We are live. Welcome to 2022's Barbarian Review and Thoughts. So, Happy New Year. I'm going to start by telling you this was a movie I really loved. This video will have some jokes, possibly a lot, and I will definitely get into a number of serious things. So... Uh, I realize this video is long. I'm gonna do what I can to make it worth your time. I start this video with a review where if I spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger. Until I'm done with the spoilers, you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. As soon as I end the review itself, please note the rest of the video will have lots of spoilers, including discussing the ending. So content warning and or trigger warning. The movie features and I'm going to be discussing Sexual assault and rape, torture, kidnapping, murder, body horror, uh, let's see, death and suicide. And that, yes, so the movie is rated R, and I don't think I, uh, yeah, if you want to know exactly why, I, I don't think you should know why before watching, but the, the, yeah, you know, on IMDb, it has the, the, the MPAA rating and why it is, so, yeah. And that brings us to, yeah, so this was a movie that I added to my schedule because it was on Disney Plus, which I'm paying for regardless of how much or how little I use it, so I try to use it a lot. Um, yeah, I'm really glad I watched this movie. And yeah, I've been watching horror movies since I was old enough to understand words. Okay, that's a slight exaggeration. I think probably around age 13 or so. Um, yeah. And yeah, big fan of horror, so, yeah. You know, I've, I've seen some people say that if you like this movie, you must not have watched a lot of horror. I assure you, I have definitely watched. I've, I've watched horror movies. Is there a decade that I haven't watched a horror movie from? I guess maybe the 1910s and 1900s, but I'm not 100% sure they were making horror movies back then. Other than that, yeah, I've I've watched from all decades. Uh, yeah. And I've only watched this once, and I got done watching it, you know, right before the... Let's see... Right before I started recording this video. Now, uh, let's see... See, that brings us nice let's yes so the plot the setting a place rendered by white capitalism as nearly unlivable that does not narrow things down does it Detroit a young woman goes to an Airbnb and encounters something terrifying yes something worse than an than a usual Airbnb now let's see I suppose I'll just very briefly talk about yeah so the Airbnb you know yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, so, from Wikipedia. Several studies have found that long-term rental prices in many areas have increased because landlords have kept properties off the longer-term rental market to instead get higher rental rates for short-term housing via Airbnb. Landlords have also been accused of legally evicting tenants to convert properties into higher-rent Airbnb listings. Let's see. Yeah, a study published in July 2017 found that a 10% in Airbnb 10% increase in Airbnb listings in a given neighborhood corresponds to a 0.42 increase in rents and a 0.76 increase in house prices. A study in 2018 found that in low east side of Manhattan, full-time listings earned hosts on average of two to three times the median ever average rent. A study in 2019 by the University of Massachusetts Boston Department of Economics found that with every increase of 12 Airbnb listings per census tract, asking rents increased by 0.4 percent let's see inside airbnb and watchdog journalism website has accused the company of manipulating its data 
to portray a different result. Let's see, concerns on the effect of Airbnb on the housing affordability has resulted in increased lodging regulations and restrictions, which have generally been opposed by Airbnb via lobbying efforts. Yeah, lobbying. That term covers a lot of very, very bad things being allowed to happen. So, uh, yeah, this, um, yeah, before I get into this, the, um, yeah, there's a lot of talent on display here, a, a tremendous amount of talent. So, uh, I'm, I'm going to try to, to talk about every single aspect that they did a really great job on, but just if I neglect mentioning something, it's simply like, you know, bad memory. It's not that I don't think they did a great job. Um, right. Uh, some people, when, when they're... In some reviews, some user reviews for horror movies on Disney+, Plus, you know, some people say, how can this be on Disney+, Plus? keep in mind, it is behind the age lock, which means that if you're in a place where it's possible that children or teenagers will try to watch something on Disney+, Plus, you can password protect this and anything else above a certain age rating. You know, the same thing goes for, for example, the Netflix Marvel shows, which are for adults, even though most of what Disney has made, that's MCU, is for teenagers. Now, um... That might sound slightly... I, I love the MCU. I'm not putting it down. So, this was written by Zach Kreger, who... I have to admit, I didn't even... I didn't know his name before I started researching this. Apparently, he's known for something called WKUK, or The Whitest Kids You Know, which is a comedy show so yeah um i don't know exactly well okay so the first person is almost definitely the, the first prominent case is uh of course the um i can't believe i'm blanking on his name but he made the movie called nope so i will have his name jordan peele started this trend of like people who are usually thought of as comedians, making some of the scariest movies that just, it's, 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 I don't, yeah, but you know, they, there, there is, I mean, certainly there is some, you know, comedy and horror are both about increasing tension and then releasing it at the right time, um, anything that's scary can be funny under the right circumstances, um, yeah, but I I hope this keeps going. They they are just like Jordan Peele and I'm I'm gonna be watching whatever Zach Cracker puts out next, especially if it's horror. Um yeah, they are incredibly talented. Like I don't I'm not sure if I necessarily loved Nope, but I I respect it a lot. And everything else that he has written and directed that's horror, I really love. Um I will very quickly go through the list so ah, there are other Jordans there we go so Jordan Peele yeah so other than nope there's get out us and he also helped write the 2021 Candyman which I also thought was you know it's easily the best since the first and in some ways it is better than the first and yeah um, yeah, this is really well written. Um, the characters make sense. You know, not all of them are, you know, I'm not fond of the term, but some of the characters are not the most likable. I forget who said it, but someone pointed out that it's okay if your characters aren't likable as long as they are interesting assholes. It's okay for them to be assholes, but they have to be interesting assholes. And I 100% agree, and that is definitely the case here. I'm not going to tell you who is, you know, who's who's an asshole and who isn't. You'll find out over the course of watching. 
but I will definitely say that every character was either someone that was easy to to sympathize and empathize with or an interesting asshole. And yeah, um, yeah, uh, that, yeah. So that's the that's the characters. The concept is is quite. You know, they they um, Zach really thought of you know something yeah um the social commentary is just amazing this comments on so many things it just and somehow manages to tie them all together it's very very impressive so uh this handles plot twists very well um let's see yeah so this was also directed by Zach Kreger and yeah, so other than this, he also, let's see, he directed the, the short, uh, wait, is that right? IMDb recently changed how they list credits and I am still not 100%. At, oh, okay. Yeah. So he. Yeah, he he directed for various, um, yeah, he was a director on The Whitest Kids You Know. Uh, he directed Miss March, which I'm not going to pretend I ever heard of. Uh, 2009, um, yeah, uh, okay, yeah, uh, um, Youth, comedy, um, sex, yeah, yeah, sex, sex comedy, I think they're called. It's been a while since I watched one. I'm not disparaging that, but I don't watch very many anymore. Um, the Civil War on Drugs, which, yeah, I, I, um, okay, so yeah, that is a WKUK thing yeah that sounds i like that concept even from the title um newsboys um where he's also a host apparently did i say that right host yes um yeah this is this is the first horror that he's directed and so i guess that makes it the third movie yeah um, let's see, and, and yeah, he also, he appeared in various of these as well. Yes, and he also wrote the, the screenplay for Miss March. Um, so yeah, um, the, the, It, it does a really good job keeping your interest going. Like, sometimes you'll you'll get something that you weren't expecting to get, but I was never... And, and I, you know, some people did find that it did, you know, that it was too... There was too much of a disconnect. And there definitely is, you know... Um, without spoiling anything at least once during this movie, it will cut away from what we were watching to something that we at first don't really understand why is it cutting to this, but within, you know, I, I, it's it's that kind of thing where basically, you know, it, it doesn't, it doesn't stay like, it's disorienting at first, but it doesn't remain that way. After a little while, you realize what's going on. You know, just just give it some minutes, and for I can only speak for me personally, but I found it extremely easy to give it several minutes because I had to know how does this connect. And it was just it's such a bold choice, and bold choices sometimes pay off, sometimes don't. Hear it absolutely did, at least in my opinion. So uh, yeah, I have some quotes from critics and user reviews. Avoid spoilers. Very true. Um, yeah, some people say. That it's a horror comedy. Some people say that it's a horror movie with some jokes. Um, 
ultimately, yeah, I, th I think it's more, it's it's a horror movie with some jokes. You know, if, if the, the, uh, the term horror comedy, you know, we're talking about, like, uh, what was it called? Um... I'll find it real quick because I know most of the, the Return of the Living Dead. While I haven't watched it, I understand that is a horror comedy. You are laughing at and scared at the same time, whereas this movie, you are scared for a while and then there'll be a joke. You know, um, so I don't. You know, if if you would rather call it a horror comedy, that's fine by me. But I would personally say, you know, don't don't go to this if you're looking for a horror comedy. You know, go to it if you like horror with some jokes, you know. It's, yeah, it's like with, well, uh, I guess Jordan Peele's movies have more jokes than this. Yeah, I would I would say so. Um, yeah, uh, you know, it will jump, it will switch between uh, character POV. And, yeah, I've, I thought it was excellent. Uh, yeah, some people said it was the best horror film of the year, so, um, I haven't watched every single horror movie. I tried to watch the ones I could, but, so, it, uh, yeah, compared to Fresh, The Black Phone, Halloween Ends, and Nope. Okay, uh, I definitely think it worked better than Nope. Um, it's, it's scarier for more of it than Halloween Ends, so I think... You know, I, I did like Halloween Ends a lot, um, but I understand why some people really hated it. Um, oof. Uh, I think it might be tied with Fresh. And the Black Phone... Um, yeah, overall, I think I... I um, the, the Black Phone could be in intensely terrifying, but... A chunk of it just isn't really, and I'm not sure it's trying to be that scary. Where, you know, this movie, like, it starts scary, and, like, over the course of it, it's basically different things that you are afraid of. I, I'm really impressed that they managed to make it all come together. But, yeah, over the course of it, it might change what you're scared of, but, yeah. It starts scary, it's scary throughout, yeah. Uh, let's see, yeah, other quotes. Keeps information away from the audience for a long time, pay close attention to fully appreciate it. Craiger plays brilliantly with your expectations throughout. Let's see, and... Okay, so this, yeah, this quote goes on to say, the characters constantly make the wrong choices. I mean, I wouldn't quite go that far. I've, I found that they did a good job of making it credible that they were making the choices they were making. But yeah, so the wrong choices, peeking around dark corners, going back to check out a noise, but those choices don't go in the usual directions, very true. Craiger isn't smug or sly about that. He isn't winking at the audience. He's using your horror knowledge against you by rarely giving you what the genre has conditioned you to anticipate. Um, yeah, uh, I, I saw some people say, oh, you know, I've seen everything that's in there I've seen before. Yeah, but have you seen it done quite like this, though? Like, I, I feel like at the end of the day, there's only so many different things that are scary um, that you can, that you can, like, have in a movie, you know, I, I think, um, you know, there are things that are really scary that are just difficult to make work in a movie that are diff you know, um, so, but, but yeah, I, I personally thought that they did a really, really, like, I, I never saw anything coming, and once again, you know, if I had to guess, I must have watched over a hundred horror movies. And to be fair, a lot of them are, yeah, 80s and also a bunch of, of 90s. So, yeah, you know, I I tend to, to guess and sometimes I'm right while watching a horror movie. I, I find it difficult to, to, to you know... To not do that. And yeah, this movie did not... It, it gave me what I needed. 
not what I expected, and I really appreciate that. Uh, yeah, so another quote says, Lighting hides a lot, but the goriest store is, duh, duh, stuff is clear to make out. Very true. Um, perfect, and I really mean that. A bit of Wes Craven, a bit of John Carpenter, a bit of this and that, and a lot of up-and-coming and highly promising Cracker. It's good. My rating, 8 out of 10. Yeah. Um, very true. Wes Craven and John Carpenter. And that's, honestly, if you're going to... to if you're going to harken back to, to some of some of the, the past, uh, you know, Wes Craven, R.I.P., and John Carpenter, you know, they've, they're responsible for some of my favorite horror movies. So, yeah. Uh, I guess that's a, a good time to very briefly... So, Wes Craven, you know, a, a big... Yeah, um... The first and seventh of the, of the, um, ah, Nightmare on, Nightmare on Elm Street movies, um, yeah, uh, Scream 2, Scream 1, 2, and 4, to an extent also Scream 3, Red Eye, um, yeah, yeah. And John Carpenter, um, it's especially stuff like the the original Halloween movie. Honestly, also the third one, uh, which I realize he didn't direct, um, but he did help make. I, I, forget, I think maybe writing the script, but yeah. Um, Tommy Lee Wallace, I want to say, d directed that one. Um, the Thing, Prince of Darkness, The Fog... And they live, uh, yeah, yeah, I would say aspects of they live fit the, the horror subgenre, uh, genre. Uh, let's see. Yeah, as the director of Craig Rimbue's creative vitality and horror's well-trudged roots perspective becomes an expressive tool for him and cinematographer Zach Cooperstein to dig under viewer's skin. The duo implements jagged POV shots and peering views. Uh... uh Use down oppressively bleak, right? Down oppressively bleak hallways with technical aplomb, ensuring that every gutsy choice accents the tense experience rather than straining for a sense of style. These decisions allow Craiger to create a film that boasts a distinct sense of place despite a limiting $10 million production budget. Yeah, this really doesn't look like, but 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 yeah yeah I get you know, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, some people don't think that it counts as elevated. Um, yeah, some people, and, and I 100%, you know, if, if you think this might be you, some people felt that it restarts the movie right when it peaks. I completely understand what they, you know, I, I disagree with that characterization, but again, yeah, it definitely, it cuts away when you think it would stay on something. And, you know, you at, at first you might not even know, you know, why, you know, what what exactly, like the, the yeah, what's it called? Um, wh uh, uh, what's the word? You know, who... Who is this, and why am I watching them when you... Why did you cut away from that? You know, but I always felt that it ended up proving to be the right choice. But, but yeah, for sure, you know, some people are going to feel it's... Yeah. See, see, I don't agree that it removes the tension. I think it changes it. Um, it cuts away after having built a lot of tension, and then the tension is... Not, you know, what what am I going to see happen to these characters that it just cut away from. It becomes, are they okay though? What happened there? What, why, you know, what happened after it cut away? And 
what am I going to see when it cuts back? You know, so, so yeah, I, I don't want it to be like every horror movie doing this exact thing, but I do think that it is this kind of, you know, you have to, you have to play around in order to find something new because, you know, yeah, horror movies go back a while by now, you know, so yeah. Uh, let's see. Mm. Yeah, uh, like Peel Kreger's background, short form comedy informs his storytelling. He knows how to hit a punchline, understands the dizzying effect of jumping to the next gag while we're still reeling. Comedy and horror run on similar engines of knee jerk bodily reactions, after all. It's not just that Barbarian is very funny or genuinely shocking, though to be sure it's frequently both. Rather, it's that you'll find yourself laughing because it's so shocking or shocked to find yourself laughing. Like the best horror comedies, the distinction scarcely matters. Uh, let's see... Um, let's see. Barbarian to, uh, I don't think I want to give that away. Barbarian takes place in Detroit, the city that has become an emblem for America's post-industrial decline. Let's see. Um... The city has become America's Transylvania. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think I want to get into this, but I don't want to get into it before I get into spoilers. So... Uh, oh, right. There it is. And that covers it for the direction. So. Oh, actually, yeah, a little bit more. Um, as a director, Krager seems more influenced by John Carpenter than Hitchcock, particularly in his use of wi the wide screen frame and his recognition of the importance of geography in creating fear. Like Carpenter, Krager's filmmaking is never flashy, and its deceptive simplicity masks an ingenious understanding of what creeps us out. Let's see. Yeah, uh, there's a bravura sequence in which someone wedges a chair against a door leading into a dark hallway. As the character walks down the hallway, Kreger keeps the light of the open door visible in the background. This rectangle of safety grows smaller and smaller as the character moves further down the hallway, racking up tension second by second. Most filmmakers would focus on the threat that the character is walking towards, but Krager instead keeps us aware of the safety they're leaving behind. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So, the, um... The opening is really excellent. Like, just immediately... I, I really don't want to give it away. Um, I'll talk about it in the spoiler section, but... Just from right away, like, we're on the edge of our seats. And, yeah, so I'm not going to give away whether it's a happy ending or a sad ending, but the ending fits with what came before. I really like the ending. Uh, there's no Deus Ex Machina or other convenient writing. And there's no, like, post credit scene or something, but do note that there is a little bit movie left after the initial, like, when the movie ends, there's this smash cut 
to the, you know, some of the end credits starting. Don't walk away immediately, because there is, like, I, it's, it's very brief, you know, but, yeah, there's a little bit, there's, I, I don't, I think it's less than a minute of movie left, and then the end credits start proper, and, and it'll be clear when you can, you know, but the, the music over the end credits is very creepy and effective, so that's, yeah. That brings us to the characters. So, yeah, uh, Georgina Campbell plays Tess Marshall, a young woman staying in Detroit for a job interview. And, yeah, like, she is very relatable. Like, you, you really get this sense that she's just, she just, you know, she's she's experienced some, some things that were really, really, you know, she'll... I'm not going to get into it here. She will explain it very well for you in the movie. And she's just trying to trying to make sure that you know the the uh what's that what's that phrase? Like she's trying to make sure you know, it starts with the first step. It's you know, she feels like oh maybe it'll be a while before the you know, before things are really good, but it starts with the first step. She's she's willing to make the effort to, 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 you know, make things better. Um, and Bill Skarsgård, star, uh, uh, yeah, plays Keith Toshko, a young woman, uh, young man. Yeah. Uh, I don't think I want to give away exactly what is going on with him. You'll find out early in the in the movie. Now, it's not the first time that Bill Skarsgård appears in a horror movie. He famously appeared in It as the dancing clown who fixes computers in the sewer during Fish Festival. And I am going to tell you also that Justin Long is in this movie playing A.J. Gilbride and... Uh, you find out almost immediately what he is, so I don't think I want to give away. I I probably read what he was going to play, but I forgot in the meantime, and it's just... Yeah, it's... it's yeah, uh, I really, really enjoyed his... I mean... Yeah. Not every movie that Justin Long is in is equally good. But I've never been unhappy about seeing him in a horror movie. Like, I don't particularly like the original Jeepers Creepers, but I would definitely say that Justin Long is one of the highlights. Now, let's see. And it is one of those movies that, you know, the fact that the director is a pedophile just, yeah. Let's see. I mean, I would say that at least he did, you know, accept going to prison, unlike the, um, ah, uh, I'll have his name in mere moments. Ah, uh, I can't believe, okay, this he made. Um, Roman Polanski, who fled to avoid doing his time, but then doing your time really is the bare minimum you can do after that. Uh, yeah, so the, um, the dialogue is very, very natural. Like, they, you know, they talk the way people actually talk. And it re that really makes it much easier to, to really get into um, the... Um, uh, did I not? Huh. Um... Oh, right, right, yeah, yeah, never mind. Um, yeah, you know, that's, uh, you really easily understand these characters because they talk like normal people and just, yeah. Um, yeah, the characterization is quite good, like, um, stuff comes up very organically, nobody just, like, immediately talks about, you know, the the situation but 
yeah, it comes organically, and we don't spend forever not knowing the character we're watching. And, yeah, that brings us to the cinematography. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Zach Cooperstein and... Right, I am just gonna... For some reason, when I copy these things into my notes now, it does not show how many credits. So I gotta get used to writing that myself. Yeah, he... 42 credits and 6 upcoming ones. And he's been working since 2009. And yeah, just... He does an incredible job here. I don't think I'm familiar with anything else. Yeah, but, but yeah. Um, honestly... If I had to point to two things in this movie that are the most, that they're the biggest reason why it's so scary, it's definitely the cinematography and the score. They're just absolutely, yeah, I, I, I would actually, I'd be interested if, if, like, I think John Carpenter would, would really respect this movie because a big part of his horror is also the cinematography, you know, and that's, like, the cinematography in The Thing and the original Halloween movie, just amazing. You know, I watched them very recently. Still, you know, they still hold up in part because, you know, and uh, yeah, some of, some of the effects haven't aged amazingly. But, yeah, it tends to be, you know, it's not only scary when we're seeing an impressive effect. Which, you know, some horror movies are, you know... Yeah, some of some of the um, Jason Voorhees movies are only scary during effect stuff. So the editing, this was edited by Joe Murphy, who has twenty seven credits, and I'm not sure I know any of this either. But he also does a really excellent job. Like there are times where it will stay on the same shot. And you're just, you're begging it, please cut away from that, please cut. Because this is unbearable. You know, I just want to know what's, you know, just just move the camera the tiniest little bit so I can see what, or if not that cut, you know, but just, and it doesn't. And just, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, uh, some people do feel that it had a... Uh, let's see. There, there we go. Yeah. Some people do feel that some of the scenes basically should have been trimmed. I mean, I guess if you want to just focus on plot, but movies are more than plot. Um, and certainly this one is, you know. And definitely I would... I wouldn't say that there's a single scene in this... I, I personally wouldn't cut a single scene of it. Or even trim the ones that are down... Um, everything will have some payoff, in, in my opinion. Um, let's see, and, oh, here it says it was only four and a half million, not ten million, but, but yeah. Um, low budget, regardless, and it made 44.9 million in, at the box office. So that is significant, and that... Yeah, I, I figure he'll probably be making, you know, Zach Recker is going to be making more of these, and yeah, that's, yeah, I'm really, really happy about that. Okay, so this was filmed, yeah, some of it was filmed in Detroit, some of it was filmed in Bulgaria, and some of it was filmed in California. And all, you know, um... Yeah, they make really good use of the um, the real locations that they, they film at. The score was composed by Anna Drupik, and she has 59 credits, including some upcoming and... Yeah. Um, oh, including uh, uh, the Fear Street movies so or l at least the third one um yeah she's done other horror and honestly 
I would be shocked if this was the first horror score that she was responsible for because this is just masterful. She's done a bunch on Eastern Europe. I might have to try to watch that. And based on the name, I figure she probably is... Yeah, Eastern European. That that would make a lot of sense. And, and yeah, you know, if you've never listened to, you know, some of, some of the most effective... Um, yeah, uh, do, do not underestimate Eastern European, you know, people who work within cinema. Um, past and present. Uh, let's see. It, yeah, um, I'm not the first person to point out. The music is one of the biggest reasons it's scary. Uh, let's see. Yeah, um, just really, really, like pokes, you know, pokes and prods at, at your tattered nerves. It, it refuses to let you relax. You know, there's, there's, uh, um, in some ways it's, it resembles the, the music of, of the, um, of the Silent Hill games. And I realize that's abroad, so I'm going to narrow down and say, you know, the, the, um, the kind of noisy other world kind of music uh, in the first three games, you know, it's it's not quite as noisy and chaotic as that, but it does have some of that vibe. You know, it's it's noises that like immediately you know, we hear that and we're like, okay, I gotta get out of here. You know, it sounds like something horrible is about to happen. The sound design is amazing. Like some of the gore, the sound design that follows it is just. Holy crap. It, yeah, amazing. Um, so, let's see. The, the pacing... Um, so, yeah, I, I mentioned that sometimes it will cut to a different, you know, place and, and a completely different person. Um, I would argue that it... You know, it, it starts relatively small, and over the course of it, the you know, it, it starts moving faster and faster, including when cutting away. You know, so so it doesn't, you know, it doesn't, so that's why I, I really don't like the characterization of restarting the movie, because that's really not what, that's not the effect it has, it's broadening the, um... The scenario somewhat and up uh, you know um offering an interesting um i don't really want to give that away it, it does something interesting you know the movie is 97 and a half minutes long without end credits and 103 and a half with and yeah uh i was no i wasn't bored for a single second um, the, the entire, just, yeah, um, I will briefly look at what does the, um, if I had to say, you know, you should watch so and so much of it, um, I guess maybe... Maybe about the first 40 minutes. If, if you aren't interested in what happens next after that, yeah, I don't think it's going to provide anything else that will really hook you. Um, so, yeah. Um, I get, yeah, the best elements, I, it's, it's a three-way tie. Um, the way it makes you feel, the exploration of themes, and its progressive politics. And, ah, uh, worst aspect. Um, I guess the, um, yeah. 
you know what? I don't really have anything. Yeah, there's there's no yeah. Um so yeah, the uh, something I did see others say was that it tries to do too many things and so can't do all of them well. I don't agree with that, but I do understand why that that definitely if if that's something that you know, if you if you think you might end up agreeing with that assessment, it's definitely a frustrating aspect, yes. Um, I don't think it sinks the movie, but I'm not sure I've heard anyone say that it did. Um, yeah, uh, the thing I was most worried about, based on reading reviews and such, was that it was too eager to be clever and forgets to be scary. The movie exceeded my expectations. That didn't happen even once. Like, it always is scary, thing I was most looking forward to was another comedian turned horror director and yeah I'm definitely gonna be like yeah this was this was very yeah um so the um some of the covers and posters do give too much away so try not to look at those and yeah, so um, here on YouTube, I found two clips, one trailer, six TV spots, including fan ones, 30 review analysis, three documentaries, seven reactions, two jokes slash pop culture ones. So yeah, this is already a discussed movie, and I'm very glad. So on Rotten Tomatoes, this has a 92% based on 189 reviews, and a 71% audience score. Now, the, um, yeah, so there's over 1,000 verified audience ratings. So the critics' consensus is smart, darkly humorous, and above all scary, Barbarian offers a chilling and consistently unpredictable thrill ride for horror fans. And, let's see. Yeah, so the audience says, the less you know going into Barbarian, the better. But be prepared for an ending that might rub you the wrong way. Wow. Ah. Uh, okay. I have no idea what they... Oh. Okay. Um. Yeah. I think I might have an idea of what... Um... Yeah, I'm going to, it's a it's a spoiler, but I'll talk about, I think I might have an idea of what some people didn't like about the ending. Now, the average critic rating was 7.50 out of 10, and of the 189 reviews, 174 of them are fresh, and the audience, uh, or right, and it's, yeah, it's certified fresh, and of the audience, you know, 71% gave it, 3.7 or, or 3.5 or higher, and the average rating was 3.7. On Metacritic, it has a 78 out of 100, based on 38 critic reviews, and the user score is 7.4 out of 10, based on 181 ratings. So, the, um, yeah, there's 770 IMDb user reviews, 523 without spoilers, now, I read the top-voted 100 of the spoilerous ones, and yeah, so the, the 100 voted most useful of the spoilerless ones, 16 gave it 1 out of 10, 8 gave it 2 out of 10, 8 gave it 3 out of 10, 10 gave it 4 out of 10, 11 gave it 5 out of 10, 7 gave it 6, 26 gave it 7, 32 gave it 8, 13 gave it 9, and 9 gave it 10, so yeah. Um, a number of people really loved it, but a number of people did not love it, and in fact hated it. Um, yeah, so there's 191 links in the IMDb external reviews section, and 128 of them worked and were in English. Makes sense, since it's such a recent movie, that, that the links would still work. Um, okay, it was nominated... Um, yeah, Anna Drubik was nominated for Best Original Score Horror Film for the Hollywood Music in Media Awards. That makes a lot of sense. The special effects tend to be quite good. Um, there's not a huge amount of them, but yeah, the ones there are tend to be quite good. There's 
one case that I, I'll talk about it in the in the first uh, thoughts section, the first spoiler section. Um, there's some really excellent stunt work. Like I, holy crap! Um, yeah, very very convincing and and impressive stunt work. Um, so yeah, uh, the um, the gore is quite effective and. There's, um, I can understand some people might think there's not quite enough of it. I would argue that the movie is scary enough without a huge amount of gore. And what there is tends to be very, very effective. Um, let's see, that brings us to the, uh, Yes, um, you can, depending on country, you can st stream this on Disney, uh, wait, is that right? Okay, never mind, uh, yeah, I, that does not look right. Okay, so, um, yeah, I rate this 10 terrifying Airbnb stays out of 10. I'm not saying it's absolutely perfect. I'm saying the strengths so greatly outweigh the weaknesses that it's a 10 out of 10 for me. And that brings us to the spoiler section. Starting with notes taken while watching. So... Got them all on paper. Yeah, I wrote substantially more than... Let's see, what was the other... Yeah, there's there's some movies that I've written recently that I did not write quite as much. Like, that's... Yeah. So, um, as promised, I'll talk about the opening. So, before we see anything, back when... It, it's still black screen, and we hear rain and thunder... Before we even see the Airbnb, it's already scary. And she hangs up on Marcus. I think that is the first thing we actually see her do. We never actually hear from Marcus. We, we see her decline his calls two, maybe three times, possibly. I, I might have, you know. I quite like that. That's because, you know, she talks about, you know, I, I don't think she says the the name Marcus when she talks to Keith, but clearly Marcus is who she's talking to. You know, who else would it be? He, what was it? He thought that love was a way to control the one or some, something like that, you know. And yeah, you know, that's, we, we don't really need to know more than that, you know, like, ju I mean, just the fact that he calls, he tries to call her multiple times even though she keeps declining the call, you know, right, like, if the, the just, yeah, um, you know, and, and I think it's noteworthy, Keith is never seen to call someone that clearly doesn't want to talk to him, but AJ is, you know, so, if, you know, Marcus might not be an outright rapist, but, you know, I, I feel like the movie is saying, you know, men are, you know, there, there's men like Keith and Andre who want to help, you know, and, and re realize, okay, this looks like I'm, you know, I'm, I, I know what this looks like. I'm trying. I, I promise I want to help you, you know, um, like, the worst thing you could basically say about... Oh, yeah, um, I think it was was it maybe um, Brad Jones who pointed out, like, every so often Keith will say something that's like, you shouldn't say that to a young woman who's in this situation, you know. But other than that, you know, like, he's, he's too trusting. Um, he sh obviously shouldn't go down and look for himself you know when when she specifically tells you know and and Andre really did think that they were okay where they were so you know yeah that's that's basically the worst thing you can say about Keith again other than you know yeah some of the things Keith says 
but but yeah um so yeah on the one hand you have keith and andre and on the other hand you have aj marcus um he's never given a name i like calling him maybe daddy because it wasn't quite clear in the first scene if he really was expecting a baby but then later we were told no 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 that the you know the woman is you know that that is the 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 baby that his wife had you know 40 years ago so yeah so so yeah um aj marcus maybe daddy arguably the cops you know so so yeah i really love that the first time we see andre like he comes across as scary and we think well you know whatever whatever is inside the the airbnb can't be as scary and then later we realize no that really you know and and it is this thing of you know, i i think it's noteworthy that the one attractive house in the entire neighborhood is the source of the greatest danger you know and and the like when the cops see it they're like, I mean, if you don't have a key, you don't live it. Don't break down the door. What are you doing? We should arrest you. You should have to sleep it off in a cell, you know. Because she doesn't look like she belongs there, so they don't consider her human. Andre looked scary, so I'll, I'll admit it. When, we, when, when he, we saw him running towards Tess, I was on Tess's side. I was thinking, no, get away from him. He's dangerous, you know. Uh, and the... You know, and when you think back, look at what he said. He said, you don't want to go in there. Don't go in there. You know, so, so yeah, you know, but at the time, we don't have time to, to really, listen, you know, because, cause, yeah, you know, he knows, no, 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 like, there's a, you know, there's these, you know, two, two awful, awful people down there who, you know, kill people, kidnap people. So, so he, you know... Yeah, uh, uh, and um, yeah, later on, when the cops come, she's all dirty, which is a great... She said early on, no offense, Keith, but I have this thing about clean sheets and then smash cut doing laundry. She is not... She usually doesn't look like that because she knows that... As a woman and as a person of color, she is held to an unfair standard. If she doesn't look completely just like flawless, people are going to think there's something wrong. So, you know, she didn't, she, she, does, she even says, I don't know how long I've been there. You know, she wasn't able to, to so of course her, you know, the, the, her clothes are dirty and, you know, this kind of thing. She can't do anything about that, you know, and yeah, you know, I, I know some people would say, well, just leave. She's not going to leave Keith after, you know, I mean, they did kind of connect. She accepts his humanity, which is a good, like, I really love how the movie, because at first, to us, Keith is scary. He, you know, like, she, you know, she opens this door and it's like, Who's this clown? And yeah, it's it's a you know. I mean, me personally, as long as he doesn't dance, no. Um, you don't really know what's going on because it is like this thing of how? Why are you in the house that I've rented? You know, that's like just immediately, you know. And it's such a great. It's such a because. We like having a place, like, the, just mentally, knowing that we have a place to sleep where the door is locked and nobody who doesn't already know us could possibly get in. You know, that's just, like, we want that. We want to be able to, to you know, we, we feel uncomfortable. We, we don't feel safe if we don't have that. So the fact that he's in there... And he's saying, no, 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 I rented this place. You know, these things just really get to us, you know. And, and yeah, you know, 
she and we accept Keith's humanity once they, you know, once she finally does start drinking a little wine, she saw him open it, and, and this whole thing, you know, the, the, um, so, so yeah, she wants to rescue him. But she also wants to rescue AJ because she doesn't know him like we do. And, you know, ultimately, like, it's a while, it's, it's like, it's several minutes before the movie actually tells us, yes, he pressured her, you know, he basically raped her. Um, but we see the way that he reacts to the allegation, you know, he keeps saying she's lying. He keeps, he's angry that he's losing something because of her. He says, I shouldn't lose this, you know, like they're talking about, you know, even if the pilot goes forward, probably won't be with you. And he's like, but I was connected to it already. I recommended her. And then, you know, later when he admits, you know, he, he doesn't use the word rape. You know, he says, it's not like I came, oh, I'm going to rape you. Because, you know, apparently, you know, some some people think, some, some men think, if I didn't, you know, do, if I didn't jump out from behind a bush, then it's not rape, obviously, you know. Part of the reason that he recommended her might have been because he wanted to have sex with her. You know, he he probably, like, he may have told her, I'm the reason you got this job. You know, and, and just, yeah. Um, so by the time that he comes into contact with Tess, we already know AJ really, you know, he's a bad guy. Um, so when she goes back for him, you know, we, we realize that, you know, that, that's, yeah, you know, he's awful, but she also, you know, maybe it's like with, with Marcus, like at first, oh, he doesn't seem like that bad of a guy, you know, um, you know, maybe, you know, yeah, and she's just gotten used to Keith, so she's like, and, 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 of course, when she first meets AJ, that's important. When we meet him, he's on top of the world, and he's like, ah, she told people? I, she wasn't supposed to tell people. It was supposed to be just, you know, so, and when she meets him, they're both prisoners. So she empathizes with him, you know, she sees his humanity, even though we've seen him, you know, basically... I mean, he doesn't have enough humanity in him to empathize with Megan, so, yeah. And I'm still on the first page of notes, because everything in this movie connects to everything else in some way. Right, so, uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I really love the way that it gradually, like, at first it's like, okay, so, you know, she accidentally gets the, the code wrong. You know, and then she does get it right, but there's no key. And there's light in the window. And she, you know, she goes into the car and, and like, um, let's see. Um, yeah, it, you know, she, she goes back in, into the, the car, but then there's like, uh, right, right. Yeah. At first there's just a, the, the uh, porch light. I don't, I, th I think that's what it's called. You know, that's the only light. And she, like, knocks on the window's do door, you know, presses the, the um, ringy thing. Uh, yeah, the, the, the door's going ringy. And, you know, light comes on in the, in the um, you know, she manages to wake Keith up. And he, um, yeah, you know, he opens the door and they, they talk. And, you know, this whole thing, like, you know, she's, she's like, what do you mean you don't you aren't sure that this is 476? Well, I I don't live here. I'm renting it. I just woke up in the middle of the night, so yeah, the the address isn't at the top of my my head immediately, you know. And yeah, you know, gradually they they end up to where you know, he open, you know, he he leaves the door wide open. 
and the the you know the camera is b beside her and there's like a loud thunder crack and she walks in you know and and the camera like moves with her and just pitch black title you know that was a really excellent just yeah um let's see yeah and then you know uh let's see is it that I think she maybe goes to the, the bathroom or something. Um, and, you know, yeah, then Keith is just gone. And he jump scares that, you know, right behind her. And, you know, he offers her some tea and, you know, ultimately realizes why she doesn't, as you know. He's really chatty, but it would be so much worse if he was quiet. You know, it's, it's like if he wasn't, con like he's basically... He's thinking, the moment I stop talking is the moment that she's going to be like, oh no, this is when he does it. You know, so I, I have to keep reassuring her that I'm not a bad guy. You know, and he even, like one of the first things he says is, do I look like a, a monster or something like that? You know, which, which is also great, like, because, I mean, um, I'm going to call her mom. Mom in the basement does look like a monster, so the movie does eventually have um you know someone who looks like a monster. But the the um you know yeah guys, we have got to stop asking women what do I look scary? We don't have to look scary to you know some sometimes plenty of people who've done something awful don't actually look scary. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I, I've, I gotta say, I really love this thing. You know, she's like, I have this thing about clean sheets and the smash cut laundry, and that's why they end up staying up for hours, you know, drinking wine, sharing. Because the, you know, yeah. There's, um, let's see. They didn't ex he, he you know he didn't expect a double booking and he wasn't going to stay there for that many days so there's only the one clean sheet you know and yeah let's see um yeah and i i love the shot of the tea with just the the camera holding right over the the cup and just and and the ominous music it's like no, Tess, don't, don't drink it. There's something, you know, there's something in that tea, you know, because how many movies have we seen where someone drinks something that they're obviously not supposed to because it's, uh, yeah. L like I said recently, you know, it, writing movies isn't easy, but it's easier to write crap than to write something good. And if people always make the, make bad decisions, you know, that can be significantly easier to, especially if it leads to something obvious, which in this movie it tends not to. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and and he rambles about the wine. He's like, um, um, okay, I, I see you didn't drink your tea, which I totally understand. You know, you didn't you didn't see me make it. What you know, might have put something in it, but um, the wine. I didn't open it yet, because then I figured you wouldn't want anything. So, uh, um, I can open it now in front of you. Would you like some wine? I'm good, thanks. You know, and, okay, so he opens it and pours some for himself, and, and later she does it, you know. And, like, the thing with, you know, he did actually watch the documentary about jazz, which she's like, nobody watched that, you know. Which, the, the, uh, let's see, she didn't work on it, but the uh catherine that she's gonna work with uh, that she has a job interview with you know she made it and that's you know because it's, so it's like well you know she made this uh, you know i don't know, she probably didn't see it and then you know when he says oh yeah i saw it yeah and and he can give like a detail you know yeah yeah with the scene and the the band the, yeah yeah you know because then you're like has he been stalking her? Like, did he know that she was gonna go to this place and, you know, this job interview, and now he's, like, 
you know, slipping up and admitting that he knows more about her than, you know, but yeah. And they talk about, you know, uh, yeah, Marcus being controlling of Tessa and the, yeah, so, you know, he's there, he's there to, to uh, scouting, location scouting, uh, something like that, you know, she's there for the job interview and they, you know, discuss gender, gender roles with, you know, I, I really like this bit where, you know, she's like, no, 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 if, you know, if I had already been here and you came, you'd have walked right in the door. And then he's like, you did walk right in the door. <laughs> you know, just this, you know, there's this sense of, because, yeah, you know, sadly it is, it is true and the, the movie... Yeah, the movie kind of lampshades it, doesn't it? Because it seems like, no, 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 Keith is okay. He really, there's nothing, this is not a movie about a man hurting women. But with AJ, with the the cops, okay, the cops, not active, but, I mean, they're neglect, you know, they, their job is to take care of people who need help, and they're not doing that. So, you know, and, and the the... Um, yeah, let's see, the, um, yeah, I really like, you know, when he's, when he's dealing with the duvet and the, you know, I, th I think they're both chuckling, certain, certainly she is, and it is like this thing of, you know, I mean, it's not very graceful, but at the end he, he does get a result, you know, just the, you know, this is, Keeping in mind, like, before she insisted that the sheets be clean, and now she's letting him help with the, the, the duvet, so clearly by now she is trusting him more. You know, I, I realize it's not quite the same, um, but, yeah, um, you know, and, and they say goodnight to each other, and there is this little, because, like, she, it looks like she's thinking... Possibly, you know, the bed is big enough for two kind of thing. You know, not not this, not necessarily like sex or something, but but like, you know, it's it's not he's not so bad, you know. And and again, we're like, oh, is that is that when the other shoe drops? Is it when when they go to bed together and then you know, and then she does wake up in the middle of the night and something, you know, and and the door and the like. Um, ah, what's it called? The, um, yeah, and, and, you know, Keith is, is lying there having a nightmare, and just, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, I, I noted, because the, the subtitles for the hearing impaired were very descriptive, so, you know, the door, the door creaks, there's a screeching noise, and then Keith moans whimpers and yelps and then she goes to wake him up because he's you know and he's like you scared the shit out of me what are you doing you know, just, and it is this thing of like you know she's trying to help but yeah it does look pretty creepy that she's like she's you know she's standing right above him and you know just yeah i i really appreciate it because like you know she i, I don't think she actually says but you know, like you can practically hear her say what, do I look scary? Oh, right. You know, it's, it's like, just, yeah, I, I really enjoyed how it, it kind of toyed with, like, it's a movie that understands that it's, it makes sense for women to be suspicious of men they don't know. But it is also, like, it is this thing of, like, well, if you are a man on the other side of, you know, what is he supposed to do? Like, you know, just just drive away. He doesn't have a place to sleep either. You know, he's not going to get a hotel any more than she is because of the convention. You know, and like, as they say before the, you know, before they start going into the basement, that that's just one night. You know, I mean, like it's 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 a it's a section of hours, and that's you know, he's not asking her to move in or something. So. Yeah, just this this whole thing. I I really really enjoyed. Yeah. Uh, let's see. You know, because yeah, ba basically, 
you we, we get to the point where we accept okay this is not a movie about men who hurt women it's it's just not that's not what it is you know the movie is going to such great lengths to show keith is a great guy you know he like he insists the way i was brought up i'm, I'm i am not going to let a young woman sleep on the couch that's i'm sorry that's just not, that's not going to happen here you know and the the whole you know and and she's like well clean sheets though we can throw it in the laundry you know we can keep each other company until it's you know like because again like if you know he woke up in the middle of the night like he's trying to get some sleep but if he goes to sleep on the couch you know it's like ah uh, um a little bit creepy that he's not awake while she's sitting there awake you know so he agrees, you know what, um, let's, you know, let's get wine drunk, let's, let's talk, you know, it's gonna be several hours before the laundry is done, you know, this, this whole thing, just, yeah. Uh, let's see, and, yeah, you know, when she gets up in the morning, and, you know, the, it's clear that she overslept, we see just how bad the neighborhood is, and it's this great, like, because, like, when the first, you know, at, at the start of the movie, the, the, um, actually, yeah, I, I have, there was some other, uh, let's see, um, hmm, uh, let's see, um, Yeah, I think it was here, so I will... Yes, yes. Um... Yeah, so the... the um... Craiger introduces us to the street that the action takes place on. In darkness, in the middle of the night, it comes off as a regular creepy street, but in broad daylight, it's even more disturbing when we're confronted with a scene of urban desolation. So... Yeah, really, really, yeah, they did a, such a great job with that. Um, let's see, and, and I like, you know, we don't hear the details of the job interview because they have absolutely no bearing, you know, it, it looks like it's, it looks like it goes pretty well, you know, we don't need to know the details, they're completely superfluous, but then she's like, oh, so you're, you're staying in town? Oh, yeah, yeah, at Brightmoor. And Catherine's, like, she just, you shouldn't be staying in Brightmoor, you're just, <laughs> that was really, really effective, like, just, you know, because she is, like, she's, she, she has a sunny disposition up to that point, you know, two young women who are both passionate about the, the this documentary filmmaking thing, and, like, you know, they've been chatting for, for a while now for this job interview, you know, yeah, so... But Brightmoor, oh, uh, that's not a good idea, you know, just, um, and then the, you know, Andre runs at her and she barely gets in before he gets there. It's such a great, cause like, let's see, it was that, yeah, yeah, she again has to input the code and get the key, unlock the door, open the door, close the door and lock it behind her. Like that whole thing while he's running and like, just... Cause, cause yeah, you know, she just heard Catherine talk about what a bad neighborhood it was and she did see what a bad neighborhood it was. So yeah, you know, she figures this, yeah. Let's see. Um, yeah. And, and the, <laughs> you know, she goes into the, the, um, she goes into the cellar, I forget, was it a noise maybe? And you know, she she left the cell phone on the, the um, yeah, she didn't bring it with her. She doesn't have it in her pocket. She does have the key though. So when Keith shows up, she's gonna have to get the key to him so that he can come and get her, you know. And 
I, I really like that we don't spend forever on, you know, the moment that he gets the key, it just smash cuts and she's out. Because there's no reason, you know, it's no longer scary. She, she trusts Keith, so do we. He has the key, he gets her out of there. You know, there's no, just, yeah. Because cause it's one of those, um, let's see. Is it that you need the key to open the door also, maybe? It, anyway, but yeah. I, you know, and she finds the rope, and she can't help but pull it. And the door opens, and you know, she looks down. Nope. And she's, you know, that was, yeah, that's great. And she sets up the, the you know, the, the light and the mirror. So that, and, and it's like, that's clever, you know, crafty. Um, she... Make sure that you know, because she she doesn't she doesn't have the cell phone, so she doesn't have a, a light there. And you know, AJ later finds a light, but I don't think that was in the cellar. I think that was in the up. Yeah. And yeah, very John Carpentery score as she slowly moves down the tunnel, and she finds a camera, a filthy looking bed. No wonder she wanted clean sheet. Maybe she. Was that in the the brochure, and that's why she was like, no, 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 clean sheets. And there's a bucket there, and it's like, you know, and, and in her mind, like, and, and ours, you know, because of the way it was filmed, you know, we're like, oh, no, no, get out of there, get out of there now, you know, and, you know, Keith shows up, and he's like, what the fuck are you doing down there? Because it is like, you know, like we saw how it happened, but it is like, you know, how how are you locked in the bay? What? You know, and, and yeah, they, and it's that thing of, you know, she can't open the, the little window on her own, but if he, if he pushes and she pulls, together they can, you know, and she gets the key in his hand, the, the whole thing, you know, and then later she's like, oh, I can't open, ah. But I do have a, you know, she's got like the little knife that he had, that, that AJ got. So she just hits the, the glass sufficiently hard with that. And just, yeah. Um, and, you know, yeah. She explains the whole th thing about the, the room. And he's not really put off by, you know, he needs to, to see it and asks her to, to wait. Because, you know, he's going to be up in like a minute or two. And just, you know, just in case, you know. And it is this great thing, because, like, on the one hand, it's like, oh, wow, what a clueless guy. Like, you know, typical man, not, you know, he, he's not, he doesn't take the woman's concerns safe, uh, concerns seriously. And he's like, no, 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 I gotta see it for myself, you know, it just, you know. But, you know, his, his like, the performance does sell. And, and when you stop and think about it, like, so there's a there's a camera, there's a bed, and there's a bucket. I mean, is that that bad though? Like, is you know, he, and he he points out, it's a, it's a cellar. Of course, it's full of junk. You know, that's what that's what cellars are today. You know, it's it's just, um, but yeah, I I really thought like, it it is like it's obviously the wrong decision to go down and check. But we kind of understand where he's coming from. It is like, okay, shit. When he when he says it back to her, I can kind of hear. It does it does sound like this, you know. So so yeah, and she does point out about the the handprint, you know. So but but he still insists he has to see it himself, and you know basically yeah. Um, Tess has to be smart because she's a woman. She might you know there there are. Dangerous situations that she has to avoid. Keith doesn't really have to be smart. He he can make lots of dumb decisions and not have to pay in real life. So you know he's yeah. Um, life and society hasn't really trained him to be as cautious as she. Uh, you know, and it also also the fact that he's white. Uh, you know, and and I forget. Yeah, she was like part of this. Um, like he he. Uh, let's see, I think it, it said it right by his name. Um, yeah, he, he has a community organization that he's scouting locations for, you know, so, 
like she's she's going to job interviews you know there's a bit of a difference uh, you know so yeah and and he's like no it's just you know whatever i it's, you know it's he he doesn't think that it's it's sufficiently dangerous for him to stay the hell out of there but yeah so so that was a a good yeah and when keith doesn't answer you know trish goes back in because yeah, Keith made an impression on her. She can't abandon him. I, I did see some people saying, you know, would a, a woman so cautious really, you know, do that for, for someone she's only known for a few hours? The way I see, yeah, they really connected, though. You know, and I mean, at the end of the day, she doesn't know she's in a horror movie. She thinks that, oh, this is just real life where, you know, basements with serial killers... You know, that's not something you run into all the time. You know, we know that there's probably something down there because we know we're watching a horror movie. But, you know, yeah, she she didn't think that the... Yeah, she... Um, I I felt that it made sense. And, I mean, you could also say, you know, it's the wrong decision for her to make. You know, she should she should go get the cops or, or something. You know, yeah... Hypothetically, let's say that she went, um, if at that time she had gone, you know, she, she was in clean clothes and all this, you know, if she goes to, like, the cops and says, you know, there's a white guy that you could be saving, you know, yeah, they might show up and, like, we saw that apparently it does only take the one, but, like, she's super strong, but, like, her skull... One bullet, that's it, you know, so, so, mom can be killed, at the, so, yeah. Um, and then, you know, Keith cries for help, Tess goes in the tunnel, and we see these cages, and, let's see, yeah, and, and Keith is crawling, Keith wants to go deeper in, and Trish wants to leave, because, you know, he, last he saw mom... She was in front of, you know, not, not, yeah. And the, let's see. Yeah, and, and, you know, mom beats Keith to death, you know, slamming his head into the rock as the, the light blinks. Absolutely, that was such a great, just, yeah, um, really, really chilling. And, yeah, you know, I, I mean, I figure you know, it's probably the kind of thing where, you know, in between some of these cuts with the light, they replace the head that she's, you know, obviously that's not actually Bill Scar's, you know, she didn't actually slam Bill Skarsgård's head into, you know, the, the moment that it starts blinking, they replace the head with one that looks a lot like his head, Smack, you know, and every so often they will replace the head with one that's really damaged and and such, so that it still looks convincing. I I don't know of anyone that can make. I I doubt at least personally that it was just one head that got in, you know increasingly messed up like that. I I figure they probably and the the blinking light in part to heighten the the you know it makes it scarier, but it also allows them you know like. Between two images, like, it looks to us like it's a fraction of a second, but in reality, it could have been days, you know, as, as long as the lighting and camera angle is, is the same. Uh, I love the tonal shift. It cuts to AJ singing in his car, like, he is on top of the world. He is certain that this pilot is going to take off. He's going to, you know, the this sitcom thing is really going to work out for him, you know, and... You know, yeah, so, so, and, and then, you know, they, they call, and he's like, ah, great, I love talking to my, you know, two of my best friends who are helping me in the business, and, you know, like, it takes several lines before he actually understands the seriousness, you know, even, like, they're not really putting him on, or, or, you know, they're, they're trying to get, okay, um, I don't want to have to do this over the phone and and all this stuff you know what what just you know and eventually here's the 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 accusation 
And it's at this point that I noted that on multiple occasions in this movie, someone will be on the phone with someone and be like, um, anxious. And the, the person on the other end of the line will say, just relax. And they'll repeat the words that they've just said. You know, it, it happened earlier when she called the cops. Um, let's see, was that... Oh, on, on Andre, I think. Yeah, yeah. She, you know, she was like, I don't see him anymore. I don't know where he is. And they're like, we don't have any in, in nearby available units. And now with with AJ, you know, and yeah, I, I don't know. It just, I can't help but note that, you know, the... the um, you know, and, and obviously, you know, AJ is a rapist. So, you know... Yeah, not a lot of empathy for him. Um, and, and I really appreciate that. There's way too many movies where the the guy who apparently raped or hurt, otherwise hurt a woman is like, oh, but he's kind of charming, though. Or, ah, it's not that bad. Or, you know, so, yeah. Um, let's see. And, yeah, you know, it he... They, they tell him that, you know, Megan says, you raped her. And, yeah, he talks to the wealth management guy who says that he's out of money in three months. Do, you know, based on your current rate of spending. So it is his own fault, you know. And he, he loses the, the money, the wealth management guy as well, which, you know, yeah, who wants to work for a rapist. Yeah, you know, he's... You know, he, he later says, I don't maybe, maybe I am a bad person, but then later it turns out maybe he wasn't really honest about, or, or he quickly reverted to, to doing evil again when he, you know, pushes her off the... But, but yeah, um, let's see. The, um, ah, let's see, what was it? Um, yeah, you know, he, he basically thinks he can do whatever he wants, and not have to face any consequences. You know, I mean, when when the when wealth management guy says at your current rate of spending, like, I mean, if that were me, if I was told, no, no, you have to you have to spend less money. Yeah, deal. That's something that can be done. Like, this guy thinks that he shouldn't have to spend less money. You know, and, and he's furious at losing this job because he raped the, you know, co-star, I guess, maybe. Um, I've, I'm not sure we know exactly how much. Just, yeah. And, you know, we find out, you know, AJ left the state and shouldn't have. And he goes to 476 and... Let's see... Yeah, and, and, you know, he's really angry when he sees that apparently people are staying there. And he actually, yeah, didn't he call the same number that, um, that, that Tess did? And he's just told, no, 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 nobody, no, you know, I haven't booked anybody to live. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's about to, it's triple booked, I guess. It's just, wow. I do really appreciate that, you know, she... You know, he he's like saying this is an idiotic system, and you know, and and she's just goodbye and hangs up. That's yeah, and yeah, you know, one thing I really noted, and the, you know, if you're accused of sexual assault or rape, don't be aggressive and like throw around accusations and such. You know, try to be humble about it, and you know, just listen. That's the the. You know, that was an, also something that we progressives really resented when, um, you know, now he's on the Supreme Court. I forget his name. Um, let's see. If I go to Wikipedia and then I say Supreme Court United States and it probably has... Um, hmm. 
Does it really um Hmm. Um Okay, I guess maybe not. okay, so uh Google Supreme Court nominee Um Kavanaugh, yeah. Um you know when Kavanaugh was accused very credibly, um you know, instead of just calmly trying to, you know, argue his case, he was furious, sneering. Him and him and Lindsey Graham were just so angry at the at the notion that a woman might actually get justice for you know after being sexually assaulted. Just it's and and yeah. You know, I I always say, you know, the the when someone is criticized for something, I think it's worth looking at. You know, what is what is the alternative? And yeah, the alternative here, you know, obviously he shouldn't have done it. The alternative, you know, it's it's actually not that difficult. Just you know, communicate with potential partners and respect their boundaries. And once he was accused, don't like he he couldn't have looked more guilty in reality, you know the the but he was hoping he was so used to that it, you know as a white man in America, if he's angry enough, people are gonna go along with what he you know says and and wants and does. So yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah, and and you know the the um, AJ talks to his his mother, and you know his father doesn't didn't actually say that he wants to see him, you know, and you know, and and yeah, I mean maybe that's there's some chance that he hasn't wanted to see him that that AJ's father hasn't wanted to see AJ in a long time, and. You know, maybe he failed to teach AJ respect for women. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and, and, you know, yeah, so he's on the phone with his mother and, you know, he gets another call and he's like, Oh, uh, I got a, I, I'm getting an important work call. You know, and he doesn't even respond. You know, she's like, well, okay, I love you. You know, he just hangs up on her and then yells the F slur for the the homophobic f slur and yeah it's, you know smash cut and they're partying and the guy says i'll believe whatever you say but i want to hear it from your you know which is a, a great I, I really appreciate zach cracker creating that situation because that really is it yeah you know he's not going to say what happened under any other circumstance, but he's, you know, he's in front of this guy who he, he's trusted for years, clearly, you know, and yeah, you know, he said, yeah, sure, I pressured Megan, you know, and he insists that it wasn't rape because of, you know, and he said, no, no, no she was into it after, you know, and just, you know, did she, did she say no? Well, yeah, at first. And that's again just like fundamentally, if you if you're communicate, you know, if if there's a potential sexual partner and they say no, just respect that, you know. And you know, then he then he does call her, even though he was specifically told not to. So this is a guy who doesn't, he's not good at not doing the things that he knows he shouldn't do. Just fundamentally, he is no good at that. Um, and just the, oh, wow. The, um, yeah. You know, he calls her and says, you know, he start The start isn't actually terrible. He starts by saying, I'm sorry if I, I forget if he says said or did, but, you know, I'm sorry if I said or did something, you know, just... If he followed that up with, that made you feel like you weren't allowed 
to to say no to sex. You know, that but but no, then he says that offended you, which wow. Holy crap. That is you are not good at and then he follows it up with I'm not mad at you. Wow. And it is like and and we know that's not true cuz he's been calling her a lying fucking bitch. It's, you know, that like constantly. It's you know, he hasn't stopped calling her that since he heard the the accusation. You know, this is an extremely realistic, uh, you know, Me Too case. You know, AJ is, yeah, you know, he thinks that he can just get anything that he wants. So just, yeah. And AJ doesn't mind that the neighborhood is so bad. And let's see. Yeah, you know, he, when he finds out about the, the tunnel, he get, you know, grabs a knife and a flashlight. He claims he has a gun, which... Is great, like, um, I guess that makes it Chekhov's imaginary gun because it is later fired. You know, it it kills maybe daddy, maybe daddy commits suicide, and Tess shoots mom in the fucking face. So, yeah, um, yeah, you know, knife flashlight goes into the basement, you know, uses the rope, goes down the tunnel, and then he realizes. I could make money off this, you know, it's just, like, and it's not that he doesn't think that the that mattress is disgusting, because he accidentally sits on it briefly, and he's like, ugh, you know, but then, you know, he goes up and he Googles, and is like, okay, um, crap, usually you can't, but then it's possibly, you know, so you're saying there's a chance, you know, and then, like, oh, I could list it, at, you know, I could rent that out also, just not as part of the... I could make money here, just, yeah. You know, and, and, yeah, like, the movie is explicitly contrasting, you know, something that, you know, a woman's fear could be a rich man's benefit. To AJ, everything is an object. Something for him to either get something out of or to hurt him, you know, the... the Because obviously he doesn't think that he did anything wrong with Megan. And... Yeah, he, you know, he goes down the tunnel, we see the, you know, you should nurse your baby as long as you want, which, that, theoretically, yeah, that is a perfectly, but, you know, clearly she doesn't appreciate that, you know, after a while, it's maybe not right to, to try to nurse complete strangers. Let's see, and... Yeah, you know, the the blinking light as the woman, as mom comes at him and he ends up in the cage with Tess and we jump to the past where when it was still a good neighborhood and we hear that, you know, oh, Reagan, poor, poor Reagan inherited a bad economy. Oh, boo fucking who? You know, and, and yeah, you know, I don't think it's at all random or accidental that it was you know and and actually yeah I, I believe wasn't reagan one of the people really responsible for white flight so yeah you know th th this is his fault and it's also saying you know yeah it, it looked good you know we meet the neighbor who's like oh well, well i'm moving because we might not be able to move this time next year and you know oh the neighborhood is going to hell don't you know and this whole thing you know so yeah bad shit was still happening you know the the this thing with um with the the home birth and this whole thing you know um some people have compared it to Joseph Fritzl which yeah and yeah he goes to buy baby stuff and you know gets cheerful help from the you know like the literally the worst thing the the woman working at the store says is you didn't get a, a you know a, a a, a list from the from a from a um ah what was it called crap i forget um you didn't get a list from the something or you know the the woman helping with the 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 birth um yeah you know that's like she's wow that was, you know that's the worst you know she never 
said otherwise, so, you know, which, I mean, let's be honest, he's pretty fucking creepy, you know, he's just, the, the, he barely speaks, and the, the, just, yeah, he's, he's creepy, but she, you know, th this is a, a, a film where women help and men hurt, or are suspicious, you know, in, in case of, uh, you know, Keith is just, he's, He's someone to be suspicious of, but he's not suspicious enough of others. And maybe Daddy stalks. I thought she was. He was also gonna kidnap the the woman, but you know. And you know, back then he was trusted to walk right in without being watched, and that allowed him to hurt people. And and here I'm using you know. You know, I'm not just talking about maybe Daddy. I'm talking about in general. You know, a lot of men have abused their power to hurt people. Because, you know, oh, yeah, he's wearing a uniform, you know, let's see, and, you know, and yeah, we see 476, again. and he goes in and locks the window, and, let's see, yeah, and, and, you know, we go back to AJ and Trish and, you know, the, the baby bottle, you know, Trish drinks, but AJ refuses, and it's very clear that, you know, she, like, when she sees a threat, and the only thing, and, and she doesn't have any means of escape or or force, she's gonna try, you know, what's, what's that thing, fight, flight, friend, or freeze, she's gonna try friend, you know, she's gonna try soothing this part, you know, she even explained, no, 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 she wants her to, she wants you to be her baby. And she says this as if it's, you know, like she's, like she's restating a manual or something. Uh, no, 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 the, the monster woman, she wants us to be her babies. Now that you know that, you know, we have to just accept our fate. You know, there's not really anything we can do. And he just, like, fundamentally, he doesn't, he can't. You know, the, 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 this situation that he can't control, just he, you know, yeah, it, it, he, gets, he gets angry and, and just, you know, I'm, I'm not saying, you know, obviously it is a situation that should anger you, but I do think it is noteworthy that the woman, you know, it's not like she's, you know, ah, let's see. We've seen that she's willing to take steps to, to protect, you know, it's, it's not that she just always friends the, the threats. You know, when when it was Keith, she was cautious. She investigated, uh, you know, checked out his story and these various things. Let's see. Um, yeah, and and the yeah, they end up getting out of the. Let's see. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, Tess jumps up out of the cell, walks past AJ, and crawls out of window. And Andre. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. Andre warns her, and AJ's looking for an exit. You know, this time he was the one forced to accept someone else's body part inside of his body. You know, I. Again, I really don't think it's accidental that that's what. You know, Keith wasn't uh, uh we didn't we didn't see keith be um i don't know how to classify uh i guess uh let's say molested i, th I feel like that works uh he was if if he was molested by mom we didn't see it but with with um yeah we, we you know with with aj we see it attempted when they're when they're in the in the cell and then he's basically forced to accept it in the in the other room with the the yeah um and yeah actually yeah it's it is a um the the fact that he refuses is what helps tess get out of there but you know he does also throw her off the the building later so yeah but but yeah, um, I really appreciate the the um, yeah. I I do not think it's it's entirely possible that uh, Keith was forced 
was molested by mom. But we didn't see it because it doesn't really relate to... And I also really appreciate... We ne we're we not forced... We we're not subjected to the... the um, you know, when it comes to Megan, we only... We, we hear about the story and we hear that, you know, it's getting out. That's the important part. We don't... You know, her recounting it while we listen or watch her... You know, that's... Um, it's a necessary evil of the process, but I really appreciate that the movie skips to where we see... No, no, no. AJ is going to lose his job. If, if he didn't die in this movie, he would have lost his job. He would have had trouble financially, at the very least. And possibly prosecution, you know. Um, and, yeah, you know, Megan is not going to lose her job on the pilot because she did nothing wrong. And... Let's see. Yeah, AJ finds Maybe Daddy, and he assumes that Maybe Daddy is a prisoner, not the jailer. And, you know, he says, and so he helps him, and he says, she's going to pay for what she did. Without realizing the, the you know, the, the um, you know, he himself, he's trying to avoid paying for what he has done. Um, let's see. So, so yeah, I, I quite appreciated that. You know, he see he sees a man, and he assumes, good guy, I can work with this guy. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and then the the bit with the cops not helping Tess because she has no ID. She looks disheveled. And let's see. Yeah, and, and um, you know, the, the AJ, like, he, he, you know, he finds the, the um, what's it called? The, um, yeah, he, he finds all these labeled VHS tapes, which just, you know, it's, yeah, it, um, they must contain, like, footage of, you know the the yeah this this molesting and i mean eventual murdering they must be killing since they're so you know we we don't see any people around there's empty cages you know just yeah horrifying who the fuck still has vhs tapes and that is something that can wait um let's see and yes, I do appreciate it. I have VHS types. It was a joke. Um, let's see. Yeah, Tess waits for darkness since, you know, she has to... Yeah. the If she's going to get back into the Airbnb without the keys, yeah. So she does a and e to the Airbnb. And... Let's see. Yeah, and, and AJ, you know, he moved the table. You know, and, and yeah, like, the, um, the other guy... Uh, uh, maybe daddy can't even speak anymore and that is yeah you know if he's been down there for um decades not speaking to anyone yeah um you can eventually lose you know the um yeah you know speech is one of those things you got to keep it up you got to if, if a really really long time ha it passes without you hearing anyone talk or you speaking yourself and or you speaking yourself, you might eventually not be able to, to form normal words anymore. And and that's also, you know, she, the mom just babbles. Like she's talking to a baby that has, to, that still has to learn words. Um, but yeah, you know, AJ moves the table over and I, I really appreciate the tension of, because like, you know, maybe daddy eventually suicides. But at first we just, you know, we see him open the, the... Um, the the drawer, and there's a gun in there, and he grabs the gun. It's like, oh wow, he's gonna he's gonna sh fucking shoot AJ, you know, and then he suicides instead, you know. That's uh, just yeah. So many of these completely unexpected. I guess I'll just very quickly scan and see if it's something that. Okay. 
Uh, let's see. Yeah, and, and Tess runs over Mom with the car. That's, yeah. And, and, you know, he comes out, wow, your car is trashed. She's gone. You know, that that's, yeah. He really does not see things the way that she does. Just plain and simple. Every, every situation, just, yeah. And, let's see. Yeah, and he accidentally shoots her, thinking, you know, that it's, um, yeah, I, yeah, he thinks it's mom. Um, and Andre helps them and explains, you know, it's, um, it's this inbreeding and she was born in 476. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and, and AJ says, you know, I'm not sure if I'm a, a bad person or a good person who did a bad thing. I, I might be a bad person, you know, and, and yeah, I was legitimately thinking, oh, he's... He's taking ownership. He's actually admitting that he did, you know, but then later he does knock her off the, yeah. Uh, let's see. Yeah, and, you know, uh, you know, the, the, I think it's Tess, you know, yeah, probably, who asks Andre, are, are you sure we're safe here? And he's like, in 15 years, she never came here. And then she breaks through the, it's such a great, just love it. I love this movie. And, you know, she, she like, she has a very disarming presence. Like, literally, she tears his arms, his, one of his arms off, beats him to death with it. As, as he's trying to, to get across the words, of course, there's the first time for everything. And I really, I laughed so fucking hard when, like, they're, they're up above, you know, and he's like, tr he's trying to get the gun ready, and he just, you know, it keeps slipping out, and, and it falls down. Holy shit, I, that was so funny. Let's see, and yeah, he throws her off the building so that he himself can get away. He got what he wanted from this woman, so he disposed of her. Uh, let's see, and, and, you know, the, the shock on her face and her, like, full of, I mean, there must have been some kind of, because we see the ground, beneath, it's got to be, like, green screen or something, it was incredibly convincing. Uh, let's see, and, yeah, she actually survived that, and, let's see, and, and he immediately starts, uh, coming up with this, this lie of what happened, you know, telling her, no, 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 I mean, I actually, I tried to grab you, but you slipped. It was really slippery, just, yeah. And, yeah, so, uh, you know, he, he gets down there, and mom gets up. It's a cool death, you know, so, so let's see, she, like, thumbs out his eyes, and then, I th does she maybe, like, start pulling his face, or does she crush it, so, something like that, you know. Very gnarly sounds. I do gotta say, the the eyes... Um, I hate to be the guy to... But I gotta say, you know, I just rewatched Scanners. That movie is 41 years old. And the eyes, you know... Yeah, that it, it looked better there. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, and then, you know, Tess... I... I'm sorry, it was hilarious, it was hilarious contrast when, you know, the, the mom is like babbling and like, oh, there's my little baby, you know, and is that, is this where she caresses Tess's face, maybe, or that might have been another time, and Tess gets the gun and puts it, you know, and, and mom is still like, oh, there's my little baby, you know, this, that was really funny. Um, let's see, and yeah, smash cut to credits, but then a little bit after, you know, we see her walking away, and the, just, yeah, so that was it for the first section, so I am going to get into the last, so yeah, last section, notes taken before watching, so let's see, um, uh, Okay, yeah. Uh, so I'm IMDb Trivia. Richard Brake shared a story on Instagram about attending a late night 
screen of the movie, noting that a particular group of teenagers sitting a few rows behind him were really into the film and were terrified. When it was over, they were leaving the theater using the flashlights on their phones. When the light accidentally caught Brake's face, the teens recognized him from the movie, then screamed and ran from the room in genuine fear. Now, um, Brake, is that maybe Maybe Daddy? Uh, he's listed as Frank. Um, yeah, yeah, that face, that's Maybe Daddy. That's definitely... I gotta say, I'm surprised that the mother is played by a man, but I guess, like, stunt... Yeah. Kate Bosworth? Wow. Um, but yeah, let's see. The... Um... Wait, Everett. Zach Cracker appeared in this as Everett... Um, oh, he's the friend. He's the one who asks, um, yeah, he, he, uh, in, in the, in the bar. Yeah. Um, okay, I, now I gotta know, what else did I see Richard break in? Because that face, I've definitely seen him in some other... Oh, he was on The Mandalorian. That might well be it. Uh, let's see. Oh, The Death of Stalin also. Cool. Uh, it's on my schedule. I will get to it. Excellent movie. Brilliant satire. Uh, I guess that is it for what I've seen. Oh, right, right. Um, yeah. Um... Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. I am, at this point, 90% sure that he's the one who keeps sh screaming fuck for, like, two minutes straight. Uh, let's see, what was his character's name? Gary Scott. So, let's see. G Gary? Huh. Um... Yeah, I'm almost certain that's him. Uh, anyway, um, let's see. <laughs> that's pretty funny. The yeah, I'm I'm not saying I'm better. Like I would have, I would have screamed and run from the room in genuine fear as well, from from, you know, suddenly shining a light on on his face. This is yeah. The script started out after Zach Kreger read the Gavin De uh, still IMDb trivia. Gavin De Becker's book, The Gift of Fear, which encourages women to trust their intuition when confronted by obviously dangerous men. He used it as a writing exercise, began crafting a 30-minute short that consisted entirely of a conversation in which a woman continues to ignore a mounting series of red flags. He liked it well enough that he knew he had the makings of a longer film and began conceptualizing a broader story for the characters. And... I guess I can a little bit see, I mean, you can, you can tell that it start like, the stuff between Tess and Keith before The Basement, that is some of the, the very best stuff, but I do think the rest of the movie's excellent as well. Zach Greger originally offered the role of HH's Zach Efron. Efron turned it down, causing Greger to rethink the role offered to Justin Long, who accepted. Uh, I could see Zach Efron uh, doing it as well. Um, the Hollywood Reporter expose on AJ is written by Kim Masters, who is a real-life reporter at the trade publication. In the wake of the Harvey Weinstein cases, she became known for breaking stories about men in the film and TV industry who have been accused of sexual assault. The film is set on 476th Barbary Street. The year 476 was when the barbarians invaded Rome. Director Kreger insists this is unintentional and purely coincidental. I mean, I guess it's possible, but that does sound... yeah. Although not officially credited in any way, Jordan Peele was an invisible hand in shaping the eventual story. Star Georgina Campbell tells IndieWire in an interview, writer-director Zach Kreger is good friends with Jordan Peele, and I think he spoke to Jordan Peele a lot while he was writing the film. And Jordan Peele saw an early cut of it as well, Campbell said. So he was... he definitely was a kind... kind of a part of the essence of the movie. Uh, okay, here we go. So, yeah, so some critic quotes. Toxic masculinity is the villain. Um, uh, 
Um, right, so this person gave it a 4 out of 10. This movie bothered me. I feel like it's in a great position to open a larger discussion about poverty, which the film soaks itself in. Instead, it is somewhat unsympathetic. The setting and people in the midst of poverty are, for the most part, seen as things to be frightened of. Is this what we need right now when the US is facing a poverty crisis? In the end, I felt like the film just vilified poverty rather than starting a deeper discussion about why poverty happens in the first place wasted potential i mean i do um yeah i see what he means uh i wish i could really offer a strong counter argument but yeah uh ultimately the the people that are um, you know i i do think that capitalism is one of the the evils in this movie but it doesn't you know, it, t it tends to, the the people we empathize with are not poverty stricken. You know, um, the, the you know Andre does not get that much you know screen time and empathy, even though he has done absolutely nothing wrong. You know, like the the worst thing you could say about him is the you know I guess he should have gotten them further away to be completely safe. But that you know. But she's wounded. She took a, a bullet. So, yeah. Um, let's see. Oh, God. Okay. Um, so, another user review wrote, It's just another bad movie made by modern Hollywood. If you're wondering if, if this movie is free of political political propaganda. I'm sorry to tell you it's full of it after the first act. I thought Hollywood moved on from the Me Too movement after four years of movies and TV shows full of it, but it seems back. Yeah, uh, four years seems like it should completely fix a problem that literally predates modern society. How about if you don't like progressive politics in your movies, go talk to the people who are making the lives of minorities so much worse and convince them to start acting like, you know, human beings with empathy. As long as it's a problem, we have to work on solving it. Right, and then he says, men like Oh My God do better. What a hilarious retort to sexual violence. Right, and he put it he put it in quotes. As if there aren't tons of women who have expressed it much more you know, OMG, that's like a that's like a, a teen girl thing. There's plenty of adult women who have expressed it very um yeah. You know, much more you know, for example, if, if you don't currently have empathy for victims of sexual assault, you know, go watch some of the clips of Christine Blasey Ford. And, uh, you know, yeah, I, I found that what she said about Brett Kavanaugh was absolutely, yeah. Yeah, if, if that doesn't give you empathy for women, I think you're a lost cause. Let's see. Every time you think you know where the movie is going, it flips on you, and yet it all fits together in the end. Uh, let's see. Um. Uh, let's see. Um, right, uh, so, yeah, some people point out double booking Airbnb does happen in real life uh, if you use different uh, sites that list, so yeah. Um, after some coercing, Tess agrees to take the bed while Keith sleeps on the couch. The interaction is smartly written and observed by Kreger and played by Camplin Skarsgård. Tess's fear is palpable, as is Keith's awkwardness. Tess is worried this stranger is planning to murder her, while Keith is worried she might think he plans to murder her. Female viewers will be screaming for Tess to get the hell out of there, while male viewers will be doing likewise for Keith. They say a woman's biggest fear is of being sexually assaulted, while a man's biggest fear is of being accused of sexual assault, and both apprehensions are on display here. The, I, I really do appreciate that. And ultimately, I don't think, like, it would be, uh, I would really hate it if the movie came down and said, ah, women worry too much. But she was right to worry. She just, 
you know, Keith wasn't the person to be worried about, but she's overly trusting of AJ. So, you know, basically, like, let's say she, she meets, um, yeah, you know, over the course of the movie, she trusts police to do something twice, which doesn't happen. She trusts AJ, even though he isn't to be trusted, as we know by then. Uh, let's see, she trusts... She doesn't trust Keith at first, even though, you know, by the end we realized there, you know, it was really just because of a, the situation. He didn't cause the situation. Um, he, you know, overall he is basically trustworthy. He's overly trusting, but trustworthy. Um, and at first she doesn't trust Andre, but later she does fully accept that he is trustworthy. Uh, let's see... Um, yeah, uh, right, so some people didn't like the ending, um, okay, so I guess it's possible that they felt that, this maybe it didn't resolve enough, is that it? Because I feel like everything is resolved by the end, um, let's see. Then the, um, I hate to say it, but I can't help but wonder if some people didn't like that the white guy died and the black woman survived. I, I hope I'm wrong. Um, let's see. And yeah, um, I noted a couple of things before. Yeah, so um, maybe it's in part about people not caring enough about the people of their country. And, you know, even like Tess is African-American, at, at least that would be my, my first guess. And, you know, she's surprised that this part of Detroit is so bad when like, you know, it's, it's not it's not a secret that you know parts of Detroit are really, really, yeah, you know, so, yeah, I can't help but want, you know, she has money to, you know, Airbnb, even though, as I mentioned, you know, you can, like, it's, it's, um, it's more expensive for an Airbnb than a short, you know, but I, I get, you know, if you don't know people in the area that you could stay with, obviously, but, you know, um, and on the the issue of white flight, it's revealed that it's the only good place to live in the entire area. That's because it's owned by the one white guy who hasn't sold yet. And that's because he can afford to own, but, you know, own a place there that he doesn't live in. You know, it's it's very clear that AJ is is a jerk. You know, the, the only character we meet in this who is making money off, you know, yeah, he's a jerk and the... the person that the, the, was was cold doesn't bother to make sure that it's not that it hasn't been double or even triple booked um let's see then there was that other thing uh what was the um yeah because yeah yeah because aj expects to stay there at least briefly he's gonna stay there until you know he's gonna see if there's something he can sell in uh D detroit i'm not sure it's supposed to be the only place he owns in detroit um, but but yeah you know so so um, uh, yeah the woman he call he he calls and and she doesn't bother to, you know she doesn't even believe when it's a thing that happens um, that's also a thing like people on the phone in in this movie people on the phone don't really believe other people what what other people say to them some of the time anyway but but yeah um, yeah you know the theme of trust you know can we trust each other should we trust each other you know what happens when we trust each other too much or not enough uh let's see so the what was the um i feel like there was one more thing yeah i mean as you know aj's a, a rapist so he has none of my sympathy but when he points out you know well what if someone trashes the place are you really only going to clean it before the next person shows, you know, I mean, there's kind of a, a point there, and it is kind of funny that he's like, 
I can't believe you rich person are cutting corners while I'm here being a rich person also cutting corners. Do you realize how much your corner cutting could screw over my corner cutting? This is not okay, you know, just so, yeah. The, um, but yeah, uh, every single person who acted in this, I want to see in more. Uh, I really got to I, I hope he makes more. Um, this, this was so freaking good and it was pretty positively received so so yeah uh yeah so let's see uh comment section hit me up let me know what is your favorite movie where favorite horror movie where at least some of it is set in a single location that you know like a house for, for you know this kind of yeah um so, you know, I, I put a little bit of inspiration up behind, you know, got the, the Amityville Horror and Hellraiser 1. And I guess technically American Psycho 1 also does count for that. So, yeah. So, if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell like it's a monstrous, you know super strong inbred you know I, I did see one person saying you know it's very sexist that the villain is a woman who really wants you know babies and you know her her breasts are, are out and flopping around the whole new you know all of her screen time i guess i see what they mean i think zach cracker was trying to say no you know ultimately part of the evil is this woman you know it's not a movie that is specifically about men hurting women it's also about women hurting you know so yeah I, I don't know um i don't currently have a counter argument uh, you know i agree that it is messed up that her violence is so gendered you know a lot of men find breastfeeding to be gross even when it's not in the context of this movie you know but so so yeah i i don't really have a good counter, counter argument um i can acknowledge that that's maybe a flaw of the film i hope zach cracker does better next time uh so yeah there should be a link to my main channel page one two more links to stuff like relevant playlists they suggested video for you to watch on screen right about now i put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie and one talking about the my spoiler thoughts on the most recent episode of the uh, yeah, 2022 show on Disney Plus, Willow. And I did also just release videos talking about my thoughts on Daredevil Season 3, Marvel's Daredevil Season 3, and the and I did a vlog reviewing the show. Let's see. Uh, and recently the review and thoughts videos tend to come out very similar to this one. In other words, if you want more videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my way next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording, and I will catch you next time.